2019, and you have to design an entire class for this one. I believe it's just uh, one page, yeah. So they give you this big blank space, we just have to write the entire class. So, um, so you're making a fitness tracking system that is represented by the step tracker class. The step tracker object is created with a parameter that defines the minimum number of steps and must be taken for a day to be considered active. Let me read that one more time. A step tracker object is created with a parameter that defines the minimum number of steps that must be taken for a day to be considered active. So what I think that's meaning is like if the, uh, say the minimum is a thousand steps. If you only walked 500 days, you wouldn't be active, but if you walked 2,000 steps, that would be considered an active day. That's my guess of just reading that. Uh, the step tracker class provides a constructor and the following methods. Add daily steps, which accumulates information about steps in reading, uh, in readings taken once per day. Active days, which returns the number of active days. Average steps, which returns the number of steps per day calculated by dividing the total number of steps taken by the number of days tracked. So th there seems to be one thing that I remember when I read this the first time that we need to sort out, that um, there's a difference between active days and regular days. And when we're talking about the average steps, I don't think that's referring to the act. Uh, average steps includes all days, I think not just the active days and the inactive days. At least that's the way I'm reading it. Now what's nice in this one is they give us an example so that way we can sort of sort that out. So our code needs to support this constructor where we can construct a step tracker uh, where the parameter 10,000 here would be the steps that are the minimum to be required uh, to be stepped to reach an active day. Um, and we can assume that this number is always gonna be positive so we don't have to worry about the user putting in like zero or negative five. Um, if we ask the step tracker for how many active days there were so far, the answer would be zero because no days have been recorded yet. The average would be 0.0, .0 because we don't have any step data yet. Um, what's interesting here is when you calculate an average, you will take the number of steps divided by the number of days. And because the number of days is zero, um, that could potentially cause your program to crash or generate a, a value we don't like, so we need to worry about that. Um, add daily steps 9,000. So this will say that we've taken a number of steps. Um, they are not gonna create an active day though. Um, then we added daily steps of 5,000. This is still not considered active, uh, but we would be up to, if I'm counting right, up to 14,000 steps. So the uh, active days, it's still zero, but as you can see, I'm right. When they calculate the average steps, the whether or not the days are active or not doesn't matter because they use the number 14,000 divided it by two. Um, I think the rest of the examples are kind of self-explanatory from there on out. Um, here they're showing at the end that average steps should be returning a decimal value. So um, this is a problem that we're going to be solving in uh, RuneStone Academy. And they have this wonderful walkthrough that breaks down the uh, step tracker for your response. And you're more than welcome to go through it because it builds the idea of like what are the different parts that you need and it does a really nice job. I'm gonna do it without all the help and I'm just gonna go ahead and start writing the things we need. So here's what I think we will need. Um, I think we definitely need a variable to keep track of how many steps that we have taken so far. We need a variable to keep track of the active days. And we also need a variable to keep track of the total number of days that we've been stepping. I think that's all we need in total. Um, based on the fact that we should be able to make a step tracker with one parameter, that means we need a constructor. So that means, and here I'm going to write public step tracker, parentheses, int. Um, and this reminds me that we need another instance variable because this number here is the minimum steps needed for a day to be considered uh, active. So I'm going to call that min. And so that means I need another instance variable for the min steps needed variable. Because that's what I'm going to set in the constructor. Min steps needed will be set to min. So if they call the constructor and pass in 10,000, I know the minimum says needed is now 10,000. I don't need to set the other variables, but I think it's a good idea to set them. So steps equals zero, active days equals zero, and days equals zero. They would be zero by default anyway for instance variables, but I like to set them. Um, next, this 
uh, accessor method is pretty easy. Uh, public and its int. If we look at uh, active days, it's giving us an integer value. Um, public int active days. All it was supposed to do was return how many active days there's been. And lo and behold, we returned the active days variable. Uh, this is one time where the choice of an instance variable name and a method name is a little confusing. So active days, that symbol means a variable name and it means a method name. And the way that Java knows the difference is whether or not there's parentheses at the end. So um, that should be it for active days. Um, now we need another method called <clears throat> uh, add daily steps. So I believe add daily steps doesn't return a value. And you can see here that no value is shown as being returned. So we're going to write public void add daily steps. It says as a parameter for the number of steps taken, which should be an integer, steps taken. So there's a couple things that need to happen here. One, the number of steps should increase by the steps taken. Second, the number of days should increase by one because we, we stepped on this day. Um, and then I think we had one more variable to change, which was the number of active days, but only if the steps taken was, I think, bigger than or equal to. I need to double check that in the directions. Um, so uh, it defines the minimum number of steps taken. Yes, so it seems to be like the minimum. So if you step that exact number, then it's active as well. So if steps greater than or equal to min steps needed, in that case, active days is what I call it, it goes up by one. Yep. All right, so the last method we had to write was the average steps method. This one needs to return a decimal value and hopefully alarm bells are going off because there's a couple things that could go wrong in here when we're calculating the average steps. Um, the first is what if the number of days, not active days, what if the number of days is zero? So that means we haven't calculated any uh, steps yet. In the example we saw, if there had been no steps so far, active days should return zero and average steps should return 0, 0.0. So this method should return 0, 0.0 in that case. But if we do have a number of days, then to calculate the average, we will return the number of steps, I think that's the instance variable, yep, um, divided by the number of days, not active days, total number of days. Now the issue here is we're dividing two integers, and so we need a double cast here to make sure that we're returning the right type of data. And I think, unless I made some silly mistake, that should be it. So I'm going to run it. And then if we look at the example they gave us, 0, 0, 0.0, 0 7,000.0, 0, 1, 9,000.0, 2, and 10, 2.2.2. All right. So unless something bizarre happened here, that should be it. That's the entire step tracker class. Uh, and here's the code just testing it. So um, once again, if you want to, uh, although this is, I think, a pretty uh, self-explanatory solution once you think about it, if you want to go through all the steps up here, there are actually some really good review questions about how a class is built and, built and how to go from what they gave you and interpret it and make sense of what the code should be.